back. We're back. Where we fix some stuff, apparently, hopefully. But not all the stuff. Not all the stuff. Unfortunately, the gameplay is going to have to wait until next week. And we lost chat. We lost chat, yeah, because I had I adjusted the chat for the new system and. Chat has disappeared. Maybe we can come up with a better layout for next week, anyways. But yeah. <laughs> have funny over here, but chat has disappeared. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, you know, I just recap real quick. We talked a little bit about Mortal Kombat while we were playing it, while we briefly had the ability to play it and stream it at the same time. Yeah. Uh, we also talked about a bunch of glitches as we were having them. Yeah. And why that makes could make or break a, a good or decent game into a bad game. Mm-hmm. Uh, now switching up a little bit from glitches to uh, so it's a little bit more intentional, but not what the game developer want or envisioned initially. <coughs> Modifications. Uh, mods. Moods. I think, mods. I, think, I think we missed. Yeah, we forgot one. No, we didn't. We talked about it. Not really. Not really. No, we talked about glitches. That's that's why I cut you I, off. I tried to. I, I, I cut you off when we tried to transition there. Remember? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to talk about we're going to go a little bit further depth in what about makes what, a bad game. game. Uh, well, no money that makes a bad game. Uh, no timetable that makes a bad game. Glitches make a bad game. EA makes a bad game. Yep. <laughs> Anything EA? Re- yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Made by EA. Bad game. Wait, didn't you like Battlefield Hardline? Yeah. That's the one exception. <laughs> the one. <laughs> And actually, that was not even perfect, but it's a good game. But what actually makes a game turn out to be bad? Well, I think we've actually done this formula a few times on the show. Bad bad. Management, probably. Yeah. That is the is the biggest reason. Yeah. But uh, we've done like the whole breaking down the core groups of story, gameplay, and we had one other category that I can't think of off the top of my head. Do you remember? I think it was, was visuals. Visuals, yeah. To a lesser degree. I don't see and I was talking more on the development side. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? But that's what we usually do our basis on. Yeah. But absolutely, on the management side even. You know because I mean? I'm thinking, what person who's actually designing a game wants to release it wants to release a bad. while it's poor? Like, if, if you're programming yeah. a game mm-hmm. and you know there are problems in it and you can't, you know, you can't tell me that some of these people don't know that there's problems. Oh, no, I'm sure they are. Um, you know, if you're programming this game, working on this, developing this game, mm. and you know there's problems with this game, you you don't want to release it. No, you no. Don't. no. So I mean, why do they release it? Because they've got they're being pressured or yeah, deadlines, or they were foolish enough to set a deadline prior to actually starting the game, which or is bad. This, this is actually one of the ways in which indie game developers have a better yeah because the, have a better chance. The AAA developers, they're given deadlines by people who might not even know video games or play video games. Yeah. But why? Why are they given deadlines? Because cash revenue, cash revenue. companies. Uh, I understand, but... They don't need it. They big, don't need to do that. A That's big, a poor model. I a big thing is every... Uh, let's bring it to something that comes out every year. Call of Duty. They have a deadline. Each company that makes a Call of Duty game, they have a deadline of two years. Because mm-hmm. they go... All, they alternate. The reason they have this deadline is because they need is because Activision needs this game out by the end of November for the Christmas season. Yes, what he's saying though is they shouldn't have a deadline because that they shouldn't. But, but actually, they're I disagree. Them. I think there should be a deadline, whether or not. But what I think is during your kickoff meeting, which is a project management thing, mm-hmm. uh, it should be very clear and have a very vague one. You know what I mean, like. We want to do a 2016 release. When in there? We don't know. Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. And then also have appropriate wiggle room in case you have to actually push it back. Okay. Yeah. Because so, if you don't have a set date or even just a broad date of goal, you know I mean, it can become very, well, let's add in a whole new right. upgrade system. And that takes two years to implement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, all right, yeah. all right. And that kind yeah. of helps. Yeah, I agree with you. Let's, let's, I agree with you. Let's, yeah. Let's think about some games that got stuck in developmental hell here. For <laughs> oh god! It's because they did not have that strong death, and even a loose deadline can end up being bad in some ways because well, that's they start the getting... initial meeting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Of we want to make a game. When should we have it? You know, we get the but basic mechanics. When should they? We have they need like a time, like a certain time period before the game is released, mm-hmm. where they get together with the developers, and the developers have to literally say yes or no to 
We can get this game out. It'll be completely done. There'll be no glitches, no bugs. We'll be able to alpha and beta test it. Or they have to be able to say, I'm sorry, we need an extension on this. Yeah. And they have, and these companies have to understand that it's not an easy thing to do. Right. Yeah. And going to that, uh, actually your point earlier about indie games, that actually is something that I think, this is why, personally, I don't like indie games that much. Not because they're good games. <laughs> but... They usually have good mechanics and a decent story, but it's told in a way that normally wouldn't get funding because it's not generally the greatest idea. You know what I mean? That's why I think indie games, certain ones, you know what I mean? There's obviously great indie games out there. Could you, could you see the sales pitch for Binding of Isaac to like a AAA company? Exactly. <laughs> but So it's about a kid whose mom tries to kill him. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty gruesome. And you know what I mean? That probably wouldn't make it to funding stages. Or, you know, taking it in another direction, some pe sometimes, you know, we don't see games because of this reason of funding. Where uh, there's actually a recent story that hit the net about a company that was told that they had a $2 million budget. And, which is pathetically small for a game. But it was supposed to be something that was kind of like a rehash. It shouldn't have been that hard. But when they got into it and they had to redesign everything and do all these really cool animations and actually make it a good game, they said it needs to be at least a $3 million budget. Like, need, like at least $3 million. You know what I mean? We can possibly make it work with three. Probably 3.5 would be comfy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They're not asking for much more. Right. But in perspective of the, bed, of the budget, it's another, you know, half the budget added yeah. to it. It's a 150% increase in budget. And the company just said, nope, no overhead. That's too much overhead for us. We're out. And they just botched the whole project. Ironically, the company that was getting the... Uh, money out Microsoft they bought your project and that game studio went under because of it yeah. uh, they were stuck with that product and it never shipped and they just they never recovered from it and they went completely under it was actually a very well a very good company that did a lot of work on like Bioshock Infinite uh, a lot of really good games like that that uh, unfortunately did go under because of it there was a couple of companies that went under because they were bought by larger companies and the larger companies put, gave them these unrealistic goals and they couldn't yeah. get them and now oh, you're gone I think that's actually part of the reason why bad games exist yeah is because if you don't produce even just a crap game you know what I mean right. Sega Studio is still it's in business though you know what I mean they release crap games sure but they're still in business someone plays the games eventually and whether or not you know what I mean as long as they make some sort of money it's still worth it for them I know but, but, but then, that's 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 the problem exactly meanwhile companies like Bullfrog are gone when they made actually pretty good games yeah mm -hmm. but they were bought by Microsoft I believe and now their latest claim to fame is a stupid pay to win yeah iPhone app or something like that oh god yeah and that's what happens is you know and you have to abide by these corporate deadlines because otherwise you kind of just get phased out and I think that's one of the bigger stressors in the thing and if you know, I mean, companies, players, and financial backers can all actually start talking a little bit more, or listening to each other a little bit more, and having a little bit more realistic expectations. It'd be a much better experience for everybody. You know what I mean, because we do expect a lot from games. Of course. Yeah. Even, and it doesn't matter who makes the game. We, as gamers, we pretty much hold them all to the same standards, whether the game was made by. Well. In terms mm -hmm. of gameplay and story, I will hold it to the same. I know indie game companies can't always get the visuals and sometimes when they try uh, it gets awful I'm sorry but I'll, I'll just be happy with a Sega game that's glitch free so See, yes I mean? Sega please like, please make Chris happy so, <laughs> he'll, yeah. he'll never like think of like the best day he's ever had combine all of his greatest days with that best day and the day you release and, a glitch free game actually, that'll be his greatest day ever glitch free and no hedgehog on human porn yeah that's, no. that's another no, one please, I, I please no want. no I, I, I don't think I'm asking too much. No. 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 But <laughs> I still say we got to put actually, one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we do. But anyways, so what I was actually disagreeing with you with, though, is on that point of, you know, we treat them all the same. We don't. We absolutely don't. You know what I mean? Right now, we're holding 343 to a very high standard. You know what I mean? Yeah, we do. See? Halo 5 better be fantastic. Another one, another game company we hold to a high standard would probably be Square Enix. Exactly. Uh, 2K. Exactly. Because, you know what I mean? If... Sorry? Blizzard. Absolutely Blizzard. Blizzard. 
Uh, you know what I mean? Those... I, Go ahead. I do got to give some props to Blizzard, though. They had spent millions of dollars on creating a game, and when the two main developers looked at each other and went, I don't think this is fun. I'm not having fun making it. I don't think the game's going to be fun. They scrapped it without a second thought. Well, yeah. I got to give it to them that. Yeah. Blizzard has a policy. This is Blizzard has this policy, the policy I was talking about. People, at, you know, they get uh, pressed by, you know, mm-hmm. by gamers. They're like, well, when is this game going to be released? When is this game going to be released? And, and their response is invariably, it'll when's, be released when it's ready. ready. Absolutely. When it's ready. I mean, how long has Heroes been in beta? Just because... A while. It's an alpha for like a year or more before yeah, that. Yeah, and so. on the beta is this huge button that says, go to the forums and tell us what you think. Right, yeah. Which is something I love about Blizzard. And Blizzard is owned by Activision. That's the funny yep. thing. Yeah, but they weren't originally, and they maintained, I think Activision in that buyout, they maintained their yeah. creative control. Plus, I don't think Activision is complaining. Yeah, no. no. They see that it's working, and they just leave them alone. When, when, when Make Bl- terrible games on their own. When Blizzard can literally <laughs> go, we're going to hold this tournament, and the winner's going to get $100,000... Out of our own pocket. Yep. And and we're going to make a boatload of money. And we're going to make about a million <laughs> to two million dollars off this one day event. No, way more. Yeah. Those ad, yeah. That ad yeah. revenue, are you kidding me? That ad revenue, ad plus, revenue people, plus how much they charge to get for, for you know, water. That's oh, yeah. the, at the events. That's the event, though. That's at what. the event. I know, but that's the actual, like, place. It's not. Yeah. It's not? No. Was it, what, did the water say blizzard on it? It's like well, it's it's like it was Red Bull. It was Red, it was Bull, Red Bull, but there's a markup for Red Bull. There's a markup yeah. for Blue. Blizzard's getting a cut of that. Yeah, I'm they sorry, are. they are. They absolutely are. But also, you they're, know, they're getting a cut of that six dollar water. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, and you know, you gotta think, how long was that event? Two days. Three days. No, like total time, like people spent there. Oh yeah. Like, imagine that. Imagine football ads. How much money it costs for like a thirty second ad? Three days of ads. It's a lot of revenue. Even though they're not that highly priced, a lot of revenue. Which, which reminds me, real quick thought. Stupidest thing ever. Super Bowl this year was live streamed on the internet. They took out the ads. Yeah, that's funny. Like, so we watch. Facepalm moment, please. Come on. Okay, sorry. That was, was just the, a, there was a Super Bowl this year? Yeah, there was. Yeah, no one watched. <laughs> but uh, we were all actually... League of Legends beat viewership on that day. Yes, because LCS yeah. was going on, and everyone's like LCS. <laughs> to be fair though, you can you can have like the LCS here on your lap while you're watching the Super Bowl. No yeah, one did though. Everyone was like LCS on the big screen. Screw this. I can't watch the commercials on this one. LCS. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know what I mean. And uh, I just totally brain fried on that sentence. You're, you're you're still on LCS. LCS. I am. LCS. <laughs> LCS is the best. I was gonna go. I don't know when that is. Like I see it all the time. Uh, it, uh, they, they they stream every day. I know they do. But but anyways, back to what we were saying. What were we saying? We talked about Blizzard and how awesome what company they were because they won't release bad games. Well, I'm I'm saying they they follow that policy of we'll release the game when it's done. When yeah. it's done. Which is you know kind of what I was saying that. I think more companies should follow that model, and yeah, maybe they should but, have a loose, you know, loose deadline. But I, I feel like yeah. they got to get to that place that Blizzard is. Blizzard's not going to go bankrupt if this game does not get out. This is true. So a smaller company, this game needs to get out. It needs to hit shelves. It needs to be bought. And also, yeah. the I think that is a little bit unfair though to look at it from that point of view, from company to company on that matter. Yes. Well, because Blizzard has a monthly income. Yes. So they are always making money. Yes. While, for example, we'll go with Bungie, for example, because they released a terrible game recently. Uh, you know what I mean? They have large lump sums where, uh, for example, Halo 3, huge spike in revenue. They release so much DLC for it, you know what I mean? Great maps, you know what I mean? Very in-depth. They did uh, Halo Reach, huge spike again. And then they stopped and they put all their focus onto Halo... Or, not Halo, uh... Destiny. Destiny. And they had one project and they weren't making any money. So they're just dipping into their savings, spending money, spending money, and spending money. Yeah. And they're like, we we can't keep on doing this. We can't go in, you know, we can't go into debt. So we need to release the game. They release the game. It's terrible. People buy it, though. People you know, bought they, it. They get a huge spike of money again. Pre-orders. And they pass it all. Yeah. Yeah. And especially with Bungie and Destiny is a really great example of this because that is Bungie's first game on their own. 
Yeah, exactly. Bungie has this really weird history where first they were a small game company that was bought by Apple, and then finally, and then bought off Apple by Microsoft, yep. and then Microsoft gave them the money to make this Halo game yep. that made them such a success. Then they finally get out on their own, and now they have to. They don't have this huge corporate Infinite giant <laughs> who can back them, right? And all they have is their savings. Yeah, I but get. I get. They that. got the expectation of. I do. I do put out a good game. So what makes a bad game? Money. Money makes bad games. Be careful about Kickstarters. Yeah. Because some of them, some of them go guys. They do make good games, but some of them. It's in early access for 20 years. Right. So, some of them, it's really just a scam for money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, here's your uh, demo that you paid for. See you later. Like, uh, <laughs> Bye. Like, one of the <laughs> one of the game companies at, uh, at PAX, they had it. I was go you know, I was going to do, like, this whole indie game series, and I, I looked up the game, and I was like, been an early, it's been an al uh, open alpha for, since 2012. No, I'm not playing this. I'm not, not going to do it. Not gonna no. Oh, 40 bucks to play an open alpha. No. Yeah. No. You gotta pay money to play an open alpha, you're stupid. But does that start to I mean would this make it a better game place release zone, I guess, is the best way I'm gonna phrase that today? Uh if every game kind of had like League of Legends or Blizzard type of income generation. Yeah, I think if they Where it's like monthly I don't know, maybe. I don't know. We got, we got, Riot's got to make another game so we can actually judge them. Nah. <laughs> they need to make one game forever. That's League of Legends. They, they, do they even do anything anymore? There's champions and skins <laughs> and game modes and maps. It, it's, real, it's really just a scam. Yeah. They, they, they hired a person to make the actual game engine and then they fired that person and they just hire designers to make characters and skins. I think they stole the game engine. <laughs> they, don't, they don't actually have programmers anymore. It's just one guy. Oh, no, they absolutely do. No, I know. I know. Oh, I'm but yeah. but is are they actually doing? Are they just sitting there like, hey, accounting guy, what's our stocks look like? No, no, you know what they're still doing? going up. I know what they're doing. Order the pizzas. I know what they're doing. They're playing League of Legends. <laughs> actually, no, 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 no. I know, I know what they're doing. They're playing Dota two. <laughs> or heroes of the star. Actually, a lot of them do play heroes of the star. I do, I do know that for a fact. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're, so I think they're fans of MOBAs, and that's why they made a MOBA. Yep. Like, but, I'm uh, a fan of MOBAs. That's why hello. I played multiple MOBAs. But not only that, but... Uh, Hi. Hello. We had a different layout in the beginning, but it didn't work so well. We're back. We're back. Anyways, uh, so... What was I going to say? Oh, but, you know, speaking of PAX East, I did go to one of their things, and their process for creating a new champion, at least, I mean, it's very well thought out, and they... Uh, they've scrapped so many uh, characters um, or they keep them around and they're just like what about this character looks cool cool let's take that one aspect like for example uh, Nautilus his anchor was actually for a totally different person it was for a Yordle he had a Yordle with an anchor you know what I mean and they're like ah that doesn't really work so they took it and they added it to Nautilus and that's how he came to be yeah this is great. I'm sure their character creation sessions are like extremely yeah it's really well. random they just like throw literally topics out of wall and they're like what's your overlap those two make a champion what well, he's a fire water elemental I don't know how that works <laughs> steam fire water no steam steam he's a steam he's all stacks are steam stop okay but yeah he, he melts the river I mean he, he, stop okay stop. going into our last topic of the night I uh, don't think we actually have time for you to listen too in depth though unfortunately yeah, we, we, we got really into what makes the bad game. I didn't think we were going to get that in-depth into it. We spent the last five minutes talking about bad games anyway. Yeah. Okay. Actually, you know what? How about we take the last five minutes and talk about mods that make bad games better? Hmm. For example, Skyrim. Not a bad game in general. Can't well, get really important. Mods in that game are friggin' awesome. <laughs> Have you ever seen all the mods? Yeah. I saw someone playing with all the mods. I think that works. Thomas the Tank Engine. There's every dragon. Oh, God, it was crazy. Do you think they're going to make an Ant-Man uh, vers version of that now? <laughs> <sighs> oh, God. <laughs> that was bad for that one. Pop culture reference. Thomas the Tank Engine Dragons. 
Yeah, the, the, there was a mod that replaced all the end of dragons with Thomas the Tank Engine. Was playing the the theme music whenever it showed up. No, or? whenever he, but whenever it blew fire, it was actually a train whistle. <laughs> and uh, there was another mod that like replaced everyone with Teletubbies, and there's another there's one. There's one where uh, things were Spider-Man shape, like Spider-Man colored, but they're like demonic, like spiders. It's really creepy. That was super creepy. I've seen. Uh, there's one Spider-Man. where like. Where like instead of the clanging of metal, you hear like mm-hmm. squeaky toy noise. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another one that's not a bad squeak. game, but made the game definitely squeak. better, squeak. at least in my opinion, with Minecraft. Modding in that one has its own sub community that's huge. Oh yeah, modding and you know, modding in Minecraft is what blew Minecraft up. And it was it was, it was popular. It was pretty big. But when someone brings in like these mods, we're like, okay, you can also do this. It brought more people to it. I, I don't play modded, yeah. but I can certainly appreciate it. And I've I've watched I've seen like you know big generators and oh you know, big reactors oh big yeah. reactors yeah that's what it was and uh, yeah. you know draconic and you know all this all this pretty impressive stuff. Mm. Again, I still think for what's worth, you would love applied just I think that'd be all you. I might. I mean, I've I've, I've watched some. I yeah. just. It's I'm not saying you have to, but it, it's but. interesting to me, but yeah. not interesting enough for me to go out of my way to yeah. get it. I think though, with your like the way you, I've seen the way you play Minecraft. I think that if I was ever to give you a mod to play with, I would be applied in logistics. Probably because um, I can see you being like, guys, I have items running around your head right now. Look at that. Look at it. Look at it. And it was all of a sudden just like, oh. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, sure, but. I see. The thing is, I like playing vanilla because I like the challenge to build something that seems seems impossible, and then be like, "I have no, to say, it's not possible. I've done it." See, because like, I'm gonna have some streams for you, buddy. I, I without mods though. Like, no, I'm gonna say I have some modded streams for you that shows you stuff that you never thought would ever be possible. And I might be able to turn around and say, "I've done that." You, you never know. Yeah, no. <laughs> see, but Just I like not in one block. But, yeah. <laughs> but I like the mods in Minecraft for a different reason. I don't really care about building. But going yeah. on awesome adventures, flying around in the nether. Oh, yeah. With, uh, in Batmorph. In Batmorph. And cool. just, you know, with the wings that you made me. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. all demon wings. My demon wings. Those are so much fun. <laughs> Absolutely. And that made a, good, a great game better, in my opinion. And I think mods generally do make even mediocre games a lot better. And oh yeah, just because it adds that extra content, especially because it's, I think what we all love about it so much is it's community based. It's you know what I mean. Yeah, it's, it's someone who played the game, thought of an idea, was like this would be amazing if this game actually included this, and then they did that. And you don't have to wait for the developers to come up with this idea or th- make it or get approval for it, get the budget for it, get the time people for yeah. it, and do all of it. I mean, and now a big thing that people are waiting for. It's finally come out GTA 5 on the PC and the main reason people wanted this game on the PC is, the modded. is because the modded community in GTA is huge and they oh, yeah. love just screwing with that game yeah and I love that you know certain companies do respect that and they do you know I mean they're like hey have mod fun I'm, I'm kind of wondering what Rockstar stand on it because it took them so long to release the PC I version I think but though it was a more difficult port than they thought it was going to be I, I'm guessing so and especially since they upped the ante when they brought it to the next gen they yeah. had, Gave the option of first person and all this other stuff. So, also wasn't it a whole new engine? Yeah. So I think that might have been a big difficulty. And it's also, it's also the largest world they've ever built. I it's, think that's more the challenge. I don't think they were it purposely trying to uh, discredit no, the PC I mean, I mean, it, community. And it's yeah, like I said, it's a huge world. They actually said it's bigger than the GTA Four map, Red Dead Redemption map, and one more of their maps combined. Really? I don't believe that. It is. Red Dead Redemption map was huge. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they combined that with the GTA 4 map, and there was another map they mentioned. I forget what it was. Mm-hmm. And they say that Los Santos in GTA 5 is bigger than all of those combined. So. Well, I'm not doubting your sources or that you said they said I'm, it. The, I'm, my sure, I'm like, I'm measuring Red Dead Redemption, will, like the West, all California. I will. I will mention my source also did mention that Rockstar has not released the size of the Red Dead Redemption map. Or the GTA 4 map. But they did, but I forget what the length of Los yeah. Santos was, but it was actually ridiculous. But yeah, so I think, you know, I mean, glitch, through glitches and modded mods and characters, or game design and money, money and money. timetables, 
I think a lot of factors do go into what makes a bad game or what makes a good game, or what can make a bad game decent or a good great game better. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Especially when. I think the most important part, though, is companies responding to their players. Yeah. Yeah. Blizzard at their forums, I, they are just reading down those things, looking at every little thing that people are complaining about. Mm. And it's actually kind of interesting to read down those forums and yeah. wonder which way they're going to go. Yeah, because whenever there's someone complaining about something, there's invariably someone complaining about the complete opposite. Yeah. And it's kind of interesting when they enter a new market like MOBAs because you got people coming from League, you got people coming from Smite, you got people coming from... Yeah. You know, but I think, Dota 2. I think, you know, I mean, when you get... When you already had a very multiplayer uh, game already, massive multiplayer, you kind of get good at sifting through all of it and taking, like, percentage numbers out of it. Like, 50% of the people in this entire game want this, 25 want this, and 13 want this, and the rest of them are fine. We need to fix this. They probably have a script that just goes yeah. through the forum post and be like, okay, this person is in support, this person's not, this person is neutral. And <laughs> yeah, and like... No, 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 it's one guy named Steve. Script, yeah. Steve, same thing. Yeah. He's, he's got a script to follow. <laughs> <laughs> he literally, he said that time on the keyboard, why does this work? Well, I gotta go back. <laughs> Scroll up. <laughs> But I but, believe we are out of time, actually. Yeah, we are. Maybe next week we can get that gameplay going. But yeah, we won't have as many glitches. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll have glitches. <laughs> but I said it's not as many. Not as many. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Alrighty. Well. Have a good night. Thanks for watching. See you.